Oh, they did buff it. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. So it looks like the strat's gonna work. That's actually great news for me, because I was just making sure it works. That sounds like it's gonna be a good play to us. Scan radius one. I'm in, boys. Free steal. It's a pip squeak. I'll take that guy. He's a cutie pie. All right, how is this? We're doing all right. Five things of steel. I'll bring this back up to 4K. We're making diamonds. It is time of the essence. I could add another rad bolt generator. This is 900 rads. This is 15, but I'm not going to get close to that. So I could put another generator right here. All right, we're going to put another rad bolt generator. Uh... I do have enough space on the power line. So we'll put a generator right here. We're going to have to make a separate automation to this. And then we're going to have to get the power line. I have to, I think I have to unsubscribe, resubscribe because it's still broken for me. But the last time I checked was like two weeks ago. I'm pretty sure it's fixed now. I just haven't confirmed it yet, so I can't say that it's fixed if I don't see it fixed myself. But yeah, for the most part, yeah, I don't know if it's fixed or not, but for the last time I checked, it, it didn't work for me. Ah, guys, stay hydrated. Regardless of what you're drinking, if it's coffee, if, if it's uh, whatever it is, man, if it's coffee, if it's water, stay hydrated, y'all. We have water coming in, right? Yeah, it's water. Cool. So we're going to loop the water from here because this is cooled down now. Uh, I might want to drip some more to the right. Beer? Beer works. Have a beer for me, Christopher, please. I can't be drinking beer right now because it's expensive, so have one for me, please. All right, I'm going to drip that into here to melt the top half. No ethanol, man. I see you over there, Linda. Don't get blinded. Coming in with the moonshine. Everything's expensive right now. Yeah, man. Dude, I, w I went to get an egg omelet. That shit was 20 bucks. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Eggs are freaking expensive, though, man. Not going to lie. Not had a beer in a while. I'm enjoying it. Damn, dude. I haven't had beer since. Yeah. It was when my dad passed. I haven't drank since then. Ah, that was back six months ago. Holy crap. Just thinking about that, man. It's crazy. Uh, get me asking, why do you have double doors? Uh, horizontal and vertical. Okay, so double doors. This is because we're trying to restrict the movement of the hatches because of what we need them to be accessible to. We have to brush them. We have to relocate new hatches, and then we have to feed them. And then this setup right here, the double and the horizontal in this setup, is so that they don't move to the space. That's because anytime we want to brush them, we have to wait for them to walk over. We don't want to do that. So this is maximum room size of 96 tiles. However, we're limiting their movement. So the game allows them to be free and not cramped. However, by keeping them restrained, we are picking up a little bit of efficiency for our ranchers. That way we could get away with having fewer ranchers since the amount of time they take to do the job is going to be shortened since the travel is going to be reduced. Oh, my dad had cancer. And cancer won. I learned today that they changed grooming stations so the critters lined up. Yes, that happened during the Sweet Dreams patch. So anytime you uh, have a critter that's being brushed, if another one is waiting to be brushed they will line up and it's pretty cool they actually have a separate animation for that you guys check it out man some of the some of the critters are pretty cute 
Oh yeah, that's another reason too, D Trainer. Uh, Sergeant Amalus brings up a good point. I have the double stack doors right here because it's cheaper. We have airflow tiles that cost 100 metal, and then we have the pneumatic doors that cost the same, except that the pneumatic doors are also uh, two tiles tall. So you cover more space with the same amount of material. So it's a little bit more efficient. I believe they patched that where they now queue in line waiting to be groomed. Yeah, they patched that during the Sweet Dreams patch. I went over it in my video, actually. And I have video footage of them lining up. <laughs> so I know it was back then. My condolences. It happens, man. It happens. You guys are... I, I don't want to bring the bad vibes. The sad vibes. So it's all good, you guys. No worries. No worries. Just trying to keep the vibes good. That way we'll all be okay. Where are you keeping all them Pakus? Right here, man. Oh, the Pakus are glitched. Can I scare them with a mesh tile? Nope. They're not actually stuck then. Okay, that's fine. And then... My Pakus are right here, man. Let me see decor. We have 157 regular Paku. We have 22 babies. And then we have 3 adults. I'm sorry. 157 adult Paku. 22 baby Paku. And 3 tropical Paku adults. We have around almost 200. It's not that bad. We're just stacking up the uh, Paku right there. Insane decor value. We got the insane 2000 decor value set up. I should really put freaking glass tiles right here. So we get the decor to shine through. <laughs> oh, man. They get excited. They do. If they line up, they shouldn't ever be a small wait line for them to get groomed, right? Uh, so the thing is, is that they only line up when the rancher is there. If there's no one there, they don't line up. So that means you always still have to wait for the first critter to get groomed. Because they have to get called over. And then afterwards, the other critters will start catching back up. How come we're not, uh... Oh, this is low priority. There we go. You should put that in the dining room for the decor boost. Yeah, we not we don't need it though. It's only Napolini that's a little bit stress. He's fine. He's fine. All right, let's speed this up. Uh, let's also up the priority of the uh, Rad Bolt Gen right here. Ah, uh, no, the scanner is still zero range. It has a separate call that reveals objects around the one tile radius, so results still the same. Okay. So if it's nothing on the tile, it doesn't scan it. Gotcha. That's actually fine. That still helps me out. That still helps me out. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I don't know if I'd be less stressed if I saw 200 fish crammed into a tiny aquarium under my feet. Hey, man. Hey. You should be able to look down and understand that you have a lot of food. <laughs> right? That, that, that's the upside. Yo, man, we got a lot of food. This is not bad. We're living good. We have meat tonight, tomorrow, and for the next week. I could see the food swimming right there, man. And it's going to be fresh. I don't know, man. I, I feel like a lot of the times people would be kind of pogging about that. You heard about the aquarium that burst in Berlin? Yeah, we got better engineers than they do. Come on, man. They hired me, your boy, to Legit City. Is that Cat Cam Live? That's my baby. Come on. Hey, baby. I just called him over. See, that's him. That's Mamba. Of course, that's a live Cat Cam. He's right behind me. And this is my hands. He's right behind where I'm sitting right now. But he's napping. He's tired. The kitty cats. He's uh, gonna be napping. He's trying to stay cozy, even though it's a nice sunny day tonight. All right, we're doing the wrangling. Let's continue. Kitty on the bed, Mamba. Yep, he doesn't take shit from no one. It's all about the naps, baby. Kitty cat's all about the naps. Outside of that, if something happens to me, though, he's gonna make sure you know I'm okay. 
How are you so far in exploration attack, ETC, in 244 cycles? Uh, experience. I am doing a lot of things that... Uh... All right, so first thing is that guy. I am constrained to this planet. This is the other planet we found. We haven't discovered it. We just flew past it. So when we don't have to explore and we have everything we need close by, we, you know, I don't have to launch a rocket to the other planets. I don't have to send a teleporter, manage another dupe. Everyone's on the first planet. So that means all we have to do is start worrying about how to advance the tech. So after that, since I am an experienced player, I have around almost 3000 hours on this game. We basically beelined for everything that I wanted. So this objective run was to do uh, home sweet home. So I need to get great monument tech, which means I need to get the other tech trees too, uh, material science and data analysis. So I got these two, built a spawn, started doing research, built a CO2 rocket, got data banks, started doing research. After that, you know, got to make steel, which is why we have all the ranches for the eggshells. And then after that, uh, right now, now, of course, since we're doing Temporal Tear, we have to find it, right? I had to do this early. So, if you didn't know, we have a time limit of doing Cycle 365 is our time limit. Once we get the achievement, I'll show you the achievement, one year to be exact, that's our time up. So, I have to do all these things beforehand, so I wanted to do it as fast as possible. How did we do it? I guess we just focused on it. That's probably the easiest way to describe, but it is kind of weird. Right here, one year to be exact. So 365. Once we do that achievement, the run's over. And hopefully we'll get the monument up and find the tear. Oh, the steam is breaking. Oh, I messed up. I forgot about that. Okay. So let me empty this out. And then let's turn this off. So then all the steam here just empties out. Uh, pipe breaks, pipe damage. But yo, that guy. Uh, hopefully that helps. It didn't really explain how we did it so fast, but we just did, we just played pretty efficiently for the most part. You could see that my, uh, thermal energy in the map is not really that great either. It could be better. Got you the boss. 3k hours only, what a noob. I know, man, I gotta pump those numbers up. You know what they say, right? You're only great if you are, uh, after you do 10,000 hours, right? I got to do my 10,000 hours in order to be considered a master. I believe that's the rules of the outliers. If you do home sweet home and tear before 365, would you still have to play the 365 asking for a friend? That's a great question. That's a great question. The thing about that is you have to be able to prove that you have enough oxygen and food to survive. I want to say, because it's like, for me, I have it. I have the oxygen right here. I have the hydrogen. I have more water still. And I have all the food right here. I have all the food right here as well. 200 Paku. I have 100 hatches, 100 Sweetles. We just, we just have a lot of critters. Do you also do high modded runs? I actually don't play with too many mods. I am willing to do a run with specific mod setups. But for the most part, I don't really look at mods or anything like that. So I don't really do a lot of the modded runs. That could be something we could look at in the future though. Where we have a set of mods that we play with that are specifically to make the game harder. Maybe like the Bator mod, right? Bator, is that how you pronounce that? the insane map generation mod i think there is a map generation where your printing pod is partially entombed when you start off the map it's pretty wild disease is extended revisit the deadly slime lung <laughs> whatever it might be right yeah yeah that's the Bator mod yeah, yeah yeah yeah. there's things like that but i think a lot of those mods that i want to play with like mini base mod they don't work for the dlc right that's the thing that i've i've ran into I, f I feel like there's not as much people maintaining the mods anymore, and no one has updated it. So that we could run it with a DLC. And then with the more recent, uh... Whatchamacallit? More, more, more recent update, 
there has been a lot of issues, man. <laughs> There's been a lot of issues with uh, with other mods just breaking, right? So I'm not looking into it in the moment, just because so much mods are, are having issues. Super Classic 3.0? Uh, that's going to be tough, man. You have to see if that's possible, or if that's RNG-based, Napolini's. Disease Expanded is a new type of diseases? Okay. LAP might regret running mods. <laughs> Makes the game hard. True, true. I mean, imagine. Twitch integration does a lot of difficulty. Oh, yeah. Twitch integration is too chaotic, man. I don't know what kind of run we could do with that. And Mr. Ghost Rider coming in. I see you over there. Shout out to you, man. What's going on, Mr. Ghost Rider? How are you today? Playing some Warcraft. Yo, man. Shout outs to WoW. How's the WoW treating you, sir? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a good one. And I see you over there. Thanks so much for the raid. Bring your community over to share with Iris. If you guys don't know Ghost Rider, he's a community member here. He's here uh, uh, playing the Onis, asking the questions, being part of the community. Good guy. And if you guys don't know, he's also streaming right now. He's doing a lot of Oni and World of Warcraft. I believe he's starting to raid right now. Quick raid before heading to dinner. Leo will let you know how the stream was. <laughs> Leo Far, how was the stream? Thank you so much, though, Ghost Rider. Have a nice dinner. Keep the wifey happy. And of course, dude. We will see you later. I don't want to keep you from eating, of course. So have a good one. It was chaos. What was he doing? What was he doing? What was the raid? Was he do what? What was it? Uh, the tier one stuff. Was it Sarth three Drakes? No, he his stuff was breaking in Oni. Wait, so he wasn't playing? No, he was streaming Oni. Oh, he wasn't playing WoW. I gotcha. I thought he was playing WoW. I saw that in his info, but I didn't read the actual text. He will play Oni after dinner. Uh, oh, his Aqua Tuner had a bursted pipe. Feels bad. That happens, man. That happens. You hate to see it, though. Alright, so this is at... Dude, 10 cycles. Alright, speed that up. Steel is at 3.9. What are we waiting for here? Let's make some more steel. We're grabbing eggshells from here all day, every day. Wow was later tonight. Gotcha, gotcha. Transformers overheating. Oh yeah, dude, that's tough, man. Dealing with the heat things. That that sounds like uh, one of those times where you go, oh, the transformers are heating up. Oh my god, I forgot that uh, I had to move that. <laughs> now the area is too hot. It's one of those things. Like I'll do that later. I'll move the transformers later. It'll be all right. Everything's gonna be fine. Maybe it's time for some laboratories. Hmm. I'll look into that right now. So let's see. Do I even have the tech for laboratories? That's actually the first thing I'm going to look for. Uh, what's it called? Is it actually called a laboratory? For the uh, rocket speed boost? Oh, look at this tech tree. That's so far in. Mission control station. Oh, God. All right. Uh, right now... I don't have data bank for the Radbolt rocket, so I sh I'm hoping I'll be fine. Since I don't have the data banks for it, I'm short by 110. I'm just going to go for the mission control station. It's not going to need data. It's going to need data banks. All right, we're going to send Ori back out then. It's only a 20% speed increase for two tiles range. Oh, that's weak. It doesn't help us. It'll help us on the other missions if this one ten, uh, turns out to not be the tear, though. So it'll be something to, to set up. It wouldn't be too bad, I don't think. Oh, the boost is only one cycle long, and it has to be within two tiles range to receive the boost. Oh... Do I need to have someone inside the rocket? <laughs> Can the rocket not be manned? When will you make a mod to buff it? I want AI boosted rockets. Yo, man, I got my AI rocket right here. It's a vacuum inside. No one's inside. <laughs> but he's flying, dude. He'll get there one day. He'll get there one day. That's pretty weak. That's pretty weak. I don't know if that's worth it anymore. I have that idea that I add that to satellites. 
Uh, see Wolf over there, Sergeant Amalus. Yeah, it's nice booze if you have researchers with nothing to do. It's not worth aiming for. True, true. That's a thing, though. It's like... That's the thing about Oni. Sometimes they'll add something in the game that's a band-aid fix. Or it's, it's something that's kind of nice to have, but it's not strong enough. It'd be like that sometimes. Alright, so we should have the sand and sandstone now to keep everyone fed. Oh, this one is sand only? No, we have 19 tons though. Are we just not delivering fast enough? I've stopped the pea water delivery, so we should be good. I mean, that's the thing. Satellites are used for at the moment only for logic signals. But extending that logic shouldn't be that hard. Hmm... I also have a laser satellite in the works. Dude, you know, so I don't know if you've heard, but I've had this idea since Space Out has came out. I was hoping Oni and the developers at Clay were going to add it to the game. I've wanted to have a multi-stage, like, ISS that we're able to build. I would love to be able to do something like that. Launch a rocket with a space station part on it. And then you could make a hub, basically make your own planet. And you could land on there and refuel and do stuff. So it acts as a separate hub. That's basically a satellite, right? By definition. That's makeable that you could do. Those are constructed in space and not modular though. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Because I was, I was hoping to do it so that you would have to launch, like, multiple rockets. So that you could launch the pieces into space, and then you build that together. Rip, doors don't build over background tiles? Yep, maybe like that sometimes. Watch out, man. <laughs> background tiles, man. I remember that being a problem. When you're building out in the space exposure. But, huh, you have something like that, huh? That's pretty cool. That's pretty I might have to check that out. I've always wanted something like an INS, ISS space station that we would have to build in multiple stages and potentially have that be a late game objective. It's called Logic Satellites. Okay, okay. I'll have to check that out. Wildly gestures toward Sajid Amalus' mod. I see you, I see you. Ah, Alright. I finished my coffee before 5pm. Let's go. You know what they say, right? No caffeine after 5. It's good for your health. I don't know if that actually does anything. I'm just, I just gotta believe it, right? Is this actually... Oh, it is slime lung. Oh, there's slime lung here. Rip. Rocketry expanded soon, TM. I see you, I see you. Also, actual AI modules for AI rockets. Instead of having to use a drop pod. <laughs> I use the ghetto version, man. Maybe like that sometimes. I ignore that advice, to be honest. Honestly, is it real advice? I feel like it could be, like, stuff people just say. Never go modding a game. Dude, you basically just, just use the game as your own little, uh... Like, how do we describe it? I feel like when you get into modding, one of the pitfalls that you could use, not use, but becomes a time sink is when you start modding the game, get good at it, and then you start using the game as a creative outlet for you to kind of like, like for me, I've always wanted to direct a game and develop it with my kind of like thought process with what I would want in a good video game, so to speak. And I've always wanted to do that. And I feel like if you do modding, you get into that sort of, I could mod this game into my game <laughs> that I've always wanted. I feel like there's there's a dangerous territory like that. But of course, it depends on the game. A lot of the times, if you want to do something like that, it has to be a sandbox game, right? That has a lot of freedom. Which is probably why you imagine uh, Minecraft having a lot of like variations. Skyblock, you know, Hunger Games, regular creative mode, regular survival mode, PvP. There's so many things, right? 
does not feel weird that you can add whatever you want. <laughs> hey man, with with all this power, you gotta have responsibility. In the great words of Spider-Man. With Factorio at some point, I had to stop myself from solving my problems with mods instead of actually playing. <laughs> That's the classic, man. Mods are too strong. But Oni modding feature is very bright. I know a couple of insane mods that are in the works. Ooh, nice, nice. I'm wondering though, if has Clay ever invited a modder for any of their games to work at their studio? I'm curious if there's a potential job opportunity there. I'm literally running a way to bypass MC's hard mode, hardcore mode in a hardcore only server mod. Oh, this guy, man. Is he trying to break servers? I see you over there, Linden. What's going on, Dead B5? I see you over there. Hope you're doing well. How are you? How are you? How are you? How was the Fridays? And hopefully you're doing all right, man. Destination out of range, it's lying to us. Seven out of seven in nine cycles. What's Lich based? I'm actually not sure. This guy's Hackerman, yep. He's the guy with the long trench coats at Best Buy, typing on all the keyboards. Where they edit out where he jumps, and it just shows him landing on the ground. That's a Linden right there, man. He got the sunglasses. Looks like Neo, but he's overweight. The classic, man. Dude, what is lich based? I don't know what that means. Dude, we're out of food. But we have all the sands. Is this not actually selected? Clay, sand, sandstone. All right, so we'll just do that for everything. Have that for everything. Undead sorcerer. Oh, gotcha. So it's it's role playing? Question mark. All right, so we get oxygen here from the oxalite. Pretty good. We have a lot of sand and sandstone from here. Hopefully, they just take it to the critters so they stop starving. Because I need my eggshells, man. I need my eggshells. I need my lime. Okay, as of right now, though, food is great. We have the one Grub Grub doing its thing, rubbing everything. We got a little bit of mud. I saw that earlier. That was kind of weird. I guess it disappeared because I didn't want to look at it. 4.3? We just need 700 kilograms more, and then we got the headpiece. Well, I mean, we also need this. Okay, so this is done. This needs to point down. We got to get the power attached. And then it's going to be on, charging. We have enough coal here, 17 tons. Always uh, bringing that to the coal gens with an auto sweeper. 11 more processes. Uh, oh, nope, we get 10 more after we do uh, the job right now. I also think, yeah, we're not charging this battery, right? Let's do a 90%. So we just keep charging. I want to charge the battery. And then we're going to flip the power switch to pump CO2. Research complete, nice. Interesting, Linden, making the separate modded stuff for Minecraft. You know which game I never thought of would be really heavily modded? I would have to say it's the Arma franchise. Have you guys seen Arma, dude, and the mods for that? They would have like one terabyte hard drives dedicated to the Arma mods. It's insane. It's insane, dude, like a terabyte storage. And it's not enough. But you would see like crazy stuff like Master Chief in a Warthog. Someone's starving. Oh, it's this guy. And he's riding into battle with his buddy who is a Velociraptor. And then they're fighting in World War II versus like regular people. It's like crazy stuff, man. The, arm the armor games, dude, they are wild with the modding. 
Also have to mess with the jigsaw piece. Generates empty structures. Interesting, interesting. Please don't die. 900k caps, they'll be fine. We are at 40 kilograms. Let's refill that. Let's put 60. Gotta hit the reset button. I guess Armor Mods has a lot of 3D models that usually take up a lot of space. I'm not gonna lie, man. It's pretty impressive, though, at the same time. They're still cramped. There's just too many sheer number of critters in the room. I, I don't want to kill them too fast, because we don't have enough... We're not eating the food fast enough. This is kind of wild. We can't eat the food fast enough. Oh, man. It'd be like that. Alright, so this is trying to charge, but it's not wanting to. So we'll push this down to 35. Let's cut the power here. And we're going to flip it to the back. So we could pump. And we're going to want to pump some steel to back into storage so this goes down. That way, whoever is trying to do the diamond job doesn't have to be sitting in CO2. Oni is pretty slim since it's uh, just sprite sheets. That's true. Theoretically, these are just large pixels. <laughs> right? Theoretically, these are just all large pixels. Apparently, it's possible to render 3D models in Oni. There's just no mods that does it currently. What? I would not want that, though, due to how laggy Oni gets. I think adding 3D models is just going to make it worse. I mean, I mean, lag, right? Just just considering lag, nothing else. Like, like as a modder... Oh, it doesn't do anything interesting. As a modder, is there anything that... You think it's going to be helpful when it comes down to... Uh, how do I say this? Make the game less laggy. The lag comes from horrible pathfinding. Install fast track. How about if that doesn't help me? I do know about everything that generates lag in this game. Pathfinding with dupes. So locking doors so they can't go through. Uh, killing all flying critters that also have a lot of lag because their pathfinding is insane. I don't have any flying critters anymore for that reason. Uh, things like having fish in a contained setup. Oh, there's no juice. Okay, we got to flip this backwards. I got to move the pocket wags out. Feels bad. Got to move the pocket wags out. Let's go. You also have to lock the door. Removing access doesn't work. Oh, feels bad. So, is there anything else that the devs could do to reduce lag in this game? Because one of the things I think shouldn't happen is when you're playing a normal playthrough with Spaced Out, just because you uncover all the other planets, you shouldn't lag as a result. They recreate, uh, they recalculate each path, each frame. Yeah, that's a, that's a struggle. That's a struggle. It makes you wonder how RimWorld does it without the lag. I wonder, is it just very different or something? Oh, I don't generate enough power. Oh, are you serious? Yeah, this is only 1,200. Oh, I need another cool gen. And I actually reach it. Nice. Devs could rewrite their pathfinding, but they don't. Okay, interesting. I mean, if there's a if there's a way for them to improve it, that's all I need to know. I mean, 200 travel raids versus like 16 dupes. You know what I'm saying? I I could see the scale always affecting games, but it it shouldn't be that bad, right? Basically, Oni is a Unity game where the LUA devs went and wrote interfaces for the LUA practices, so they don't need to adapt for the new engine. Interesting. Factorio does something similar to that for the trains. Dude, Factorio, man. Factorial's a weird game. I see the appeal, though. Not gonna lie. 
they built a graph of rail uh, network and pathfind on that factorio is the best game <laughs> i'll see you guys over there i'll see you guys over there factorio is pretty cool factorio is pretty cool i i couldn't enjoy it it reminded me too much of work so i i could never get into factorio because of that I may not have five digits of hours in Factorio invested. Damn. Is that a flex? <laughs> Is that a flex? I don't know, man. Anyone I talk to that likes Factorio, they have a couple thousand hours in it at the very minimum. Oh, yeah. I love Factorio. I only have 3,000 hours. And they say that as if it's not actually a lot. It's like, oh, yeah. I have friends with 10,000. <laughs> I'm just kind of like, dude, that's still a lot of time, dude. Zero Dragon, what's your play hours on Factorio? It's called Cracktorio for a reason. <laughs> oh, they need someone that understands the engine. Interesting. You only have 259 hours. Zero Dragon, man. Those are some rookie numbers. Let them know where it's at, man. I opt to. Tell them what's the real values of being a gamer. <laughs> Let him know, man. Let him know where he's at. Let him know, man, where he needs to pump his numbers up to, dude. He needs a little bit of guidance. 40 hours in Factoro, only 1k in Oni. Damn. I got 50 hours in Factorio. <laughs> I have Factorio. I only have 50 hours in it, man. That's the worst part. I'm going to get roasted by chat. Legit only has 50 hours in Factorial, dude. Come on, man. Got to work on the Oni numbers. Got to pump those up. Basically, if five Oni modders that know the C Sharp would write their own Oni game engine as a mod, performance would increase. Interesting. I switched off GOG version early to use standalone. Estimates are somewhere around 12,000. Jesus Christ. That's a lot of hours. I've been watching people play a game a lot more, and I've been playing the game. Okay. 4K, I have four. This guy. Okay, we got a printout. 2,500 hours. That's impressive, Spellmore. I see you over there. Eggshells, it's not a lot, but I'll take it. I only have 50 on Factor because I hit trains in a solo world, and I got bored. I hit trains and oil, and I stopped playing too. That's funny, Linden. That's the same spot I stopped playing. <laughs> I literally would get oil, do trains, get the purple research, and then I stop. I stop after that. I, I don't remember if it was... Uh, I don't remember if that was because the biters got me or something happened. I forget. Because when you do oil, man, the pollution jumps up. Maybe I ran out above uh, iron or something in my first area. And I got mad because I had to relocate. <laughs> it's like, oh, I ran out of resource? Oh, dude. So many biters, man. <laughs> 50 hours in Oni 2 feels bad. We couldn't convert a Linden, dude. That would have been the dream. Scale growth 34%. I got tired of playing with biters. It's not fun anymore. I see, I see. I wanted to do a C block playthrough in Factorio, and I got 50 hours into one. But didn't really have time to play it at the time. Okay. So does that mean the, the save file is waiting for you to load it back up, Zero Dragon? It's doing the uh, Fable. Damn! Y'all see this? I have a thousand kilograms of water just stacked here for no reason. <laughs> what is happening? And it's just continued to climb up. This is weird, yo. Oh, it's because it's oxygen, polluted oxygen. This is a uh, infinite pressure lock that prevents spillage. That's pretty fun. I wonder what happens when this hits a thousand. What's going on, Elthar? I see you over there. Hope you're doing well. Welcome on in, man. Happy Fridays. So I play on Peaceful and do bigger runs. Interesting. A lot of people mention that to me, that I should just play on Peaceful. But I, I ignore their suggestions. Maybe I should have listened to them. Maybe I should have listened to them. I disabled them most of the time for performance reasons. Oh, they actually lag the game, huh? 
Yo, man, Factorio got that StarCraft 1 graphics, though. You know what I'm saying? It feels like I'm playing They Are Billions or StarCraft 1 custom maps. Can it really lag that bad? I've played the There's a Million Zerglings map before. Didn't lag that bad. Then again, that was actually StarCraft. Easily interesting, interesting. So they do create a lot of lag, huh? Just a big factory. Factorials can't lag bad. If I was knowledgeable about Oni's UR, I would likely end up modding for it. Work with the uh, sergeant on writing a game engine mod. <laughs> Feels bad, Alinden. Does that mean I, I need to like sit down and help you out, man? Is that what you're asking for? Is this a cry for help, for some Oni help, dude? I got you, man. Just let me know. Factorial starts lagging if you get into multiple K signs per second megabases. Okay. Also, maybe a badly optimized mod. Oh, yeah, that's true, too. The mods do lag the games, potentially. I come from City Skylines, where that's very common. I've been working on Space Exploration mod. The mod is so expensive and well done that they hired the creator. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah, I feel like a lot of times that's how it happens, right? You start modding for the game, and then the dev or the studio reaches out like hey man you do some good work you want to work for us i feel like that happens more and more than we see because we never actually get to see that happen right only so many people know about that unless they talk about it like once you start getting 50 dupes in oni it gets slow that's true that's happened before maybe a little of my mc mod's a big time consumer though <laughs> Hey man, let me know if you ever, uh, you know, need, need some help with the Onis, understanding some of the background stuff. I could, I will help as much as I can. They hired the artist. Oh, not the mod maker, feels bad. He was the original mod creator, but he was hired as an artist. What? So he does artwork and not coding? Oh, that feels bad, dude. That's interesting. Out? Is that a good thing? Oh, why is there nine critters here? Oh, this guy. Overcrowded, and then they're not going to be happy with that. All right, if we relocate that one guy, we should be fine. Oh, he, he eventually became part of the dev team and not just an artist anymore. That's pretty cool. That's really cool. That's really cool, man. Not going to lie. Potentially live in the dream. Potentially live in the dream. Alright, so we have the steel now. We actually have more than enough. And we're only waiting for the diamonds. So, I'm going to make another uh, self-driving rocket right now. And we're going to have that roll. Oh, you know what I just realized? Napolini's, are you here, man? We left the ladders there and it didn't crash. <laughs> we left the ladders there and it didn't crash, so I think that's pretty good. We could just leave the ladders. They will help you out in Discord with mod problems. I think people have contributed to the core game in the past. Interesting, interesting. That's what really got me into Factorio. The uh, Friday news post kept me engaged when I first got into the game. FFF. Factorio Friday? What's the last F for? I am. Only on moving modules. Oh, interesting. Oh, Factorial Friday Facts. I see, I see. FFF, Friday Factorial, question mark. But it's for the facts. Gotcha, gotcha. This pit man, he is making this auto super work. He's just going through my coal bins all day. Friday for Factorio. Hey, that works too. Fun Friday Factorios. Dude, man, there's so many iterations of that that you could actually use. Alright, so I will fill up the rocket because we have to. We are at 12 kilograms. We're going to be fine. We're just going to start pumping. Build this out. Send a uh, dupe inside. Drop them back off. Steam is at a hot enough temperature that I'm not worried about because we primed the pipes. The pipes are hot. 
every time we launch, right, the pipes uh, warm up a little bit. Keeps the steam hot. It's actually heating up the steam from 130 to 140. That's pretty impressive. All right, so we have more steel than we need. Good stuff, good stuff. All we need is diamonds. I could reduce these two to grab these two, which I think I will. We're going to dig this out to grab the diamond from here. <laughs> There's two pieces of diamond that I really want to grab. Good stuff, good stuff. Free diamond, baby. Not even mad. Lurk, off to get some groceries. Dude, get the groceries, man. You know the rules for getting groceries. You have to go to the car and bring all the groceries back in one trip. Does anyone do that in chat? Does anyone actually, like, try to bring back groceries in one trip? All the bags in one hand? <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about, man? Anytime you go, go, go get groceries, you have the self-challenge where you go, I, I could carry this in one trip. And I actually don't do that anymore because I have collapsible bins in my trunk. I have four of them. So I just pull up the bin of goods every time because they're stackable and I have them in the trunk so I could separate all the goods so nothing gets crushed. So I just carry one bin at a time to my house. And then when I'm done, I just stack them all up, collapse them, put them back in the trunk. <laughs> oh, man. Have you guys seen the strat, though, with the... Uh, what do you guys call that? What do you guys call that? It's, it's, uh, it's a clip like this. It's like a circle, but not really. And then this kind of opens up like that. And then it closes back like this and it locks. And sometimes rock climbers have this. What's this called? You guys know what I'm talking about? It's like a piece of metal. This part opens up. And then you could slide stuff inside and then close it back. Carabiner? Carabiner. Carabiner. Hey, Prima Donita, I see you over there. I hope you're doing well. I've seen someone say life hack. Put this in your trunk, put all of the uh, grocery bags, the, the handles into this, and then you lift this up and this carries all your groceries. And they say that because of the plastic and because of how thin it could get, it makes it feel like it's more heavier and this gives you an easy handle. And then you just put all the groceries there so that, you know, you're just worried about weights, not so much uh, the strain on your fingers or anything like that. I've heard that was pretty clutch. Have it, do you guys do this, man? Keep that in the uh, in the trunk for that. It's actually named after somebody. Oh, it's not okay. Was that the person's last name? I mean, that's probably easy to Google. Kara, 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 Kara or Kara? <laughs> Is that Kara or Kara? I, it, could, it could be both, right? Because I, I see the word car. And I also see the word care. But instead of E at the end, it's an A. And then when I played WoW, it used to be called Karazan. K-A-R-A. -A. But then at the same time, you say Sarah. <laughs> so uh, what the heck? Is it actually Kara or Kara? I could, I could read it both ways. It's pronounced how I misspelled it. Wait, but I don't know how to pronounce C-A-R-A. Kara in terms of pronunciation. Thank you, Half Pint. I see you over there. I don't know how it's actually spelled. <laughs> so it's uh, Kara Biner. Kara Biner? Kara Biner. Kara. Kara. Wait, so it is Kara, like Sarah? Dude, I'm so confused. Kara. It's Kara. So it's like Sarah with a C. It's named after the profession which used this, which is a rifleman. So it's the same carbine? But it's called a carbine. 
So it's called a carabiner. Because that's what it's... It's a carbine rifle, right? Is that is that what it's based off of? So it's called a carabine. Carabiner. Carabiner? I'm so confused, dude. Source, I'm a climber. I see a half pint. Carabiner. Carabiner. I'm I'm so I gotta I gotta Google the lady, the robotic lady on Google. It's gonna help me pronounce that after stream. We're gonna try our best. <laughs> We're gonna try our best. We're gonna try our best. I see you guys, I see you guys. Why don't we make that on a Friday? I see a Razoroth. <laughs> I see you over there. Alright, we're ready. Uh, Steam is filled. Let's turn this off. Let's have it overflow to the other engine. Nah, man. Part of me doesn't want this to become topic of conversation because potentially there's a slur in there. <laughs> so I don't want to have a pronunciation stream. I don't want to get canceled, fam. They don't think it'd be like it is, but it do. All right, so I got to go the opposite way next. Uh, I guess we go east. We're not going to go to that cluster. We're going to go to here. One, two, three, ten tiles. Nice. So we go to here. And then we have the 150 kilograms of steam, so we're good. This is going to be Napolini's. Good luck, buddy. And then we'll launch. All right, so the diamonds are out. Good stuff. And we have a door there, so we just lock this. At the moment, I just have deoxidizers do their thing, getting rid of slime lung. That's covering about 2,000 tiles. I mean, that's what I do. That's what I do, right? We have slime lung. Slowly, it moves around, but, you know, it's not that bad. Damn, I have actually a lot of slime lung, more than I actually expected. All right, you're in there? Nice. All right, Napolini's. There he is. Let's move that to here. Hopefully, that's all we need to do. Let's also deconstruct this, get some refined copper back. I might need to build another rocket. I might. And so we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rockets, potentially. Depending on if we find it here or not, we're sending another one. And we actually have enough steel already. So I think we're going to send another one right now as well. Might as well. So let's get another one of the cartographic modules. We already have more than five tons. Build this out, and let's build another steam engine, just because I think we need to. Let's go with the copper. Oh, we're running out of refined metals. That's not a good sign. I mean, we have a lot of refined copper we could be uh, just smelting. I have 12. Must be a terror thing. Oh, yeah. Let's do a, let's do a count. One, two, three, four, five. Six. I don't know if this counts. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I have 12 as well. Maybe the points of interest are about the same for the Terra Star. Who knows? That's something I don't know if I could confirm. All right, so we got to build this on top of that. I don't want to wait for that. So we'll build the other stuff first, like the Trailblazer. And then the Solo space for a nose cone. And then we'll wait for that to be built. Okay, cool. So, charging this up. This should be a lot faster now. We'll probably finish this today. I can neither confirm or deny. Oh, the rock, the Paku Filet keeps rotting. Need to make sure no one here is cramped or overcrowded. Hey, Lukova. Welcome on in, man. And that is the YouTube channel, if you guys didn't know. My YouTube channel. To legit city we have our vods updated right now are uploaded right now so you guys could follow with us if you guys miss a couple of the vods 
there's a little bit of issues with Twitch not allowing me to publish. So some of the Oni videos are not on Twitch and they're going to be on YouTube instead. Also, I need a little bit time. There's not enough time in the world, but I need to start uploading some content again. Some actual non-VOD content. I say that so much and I feel so bad. But I really need to get back on that. Sand 11, sandstone is down. Okay, we gotta keep mining. We just have to keep mining because otherwise we're just gonna run out of the resource to feed the hatches. Theoretically though, I don't think we need to feed them as much anymore. We have enough steel. So maybe we reduce the number of uh, hatches we feed. That's probably good. So I think what we'll do is we'll bop the, wait, no. Let's let's lower this to one. Copy. And then whatever is there is there. They'll finish that. And then we're gonna knock out these three ranches. Cause I don't think we need them anymore. And we're running out of uh things to feed the critters. The sand and sandstone right there. That being said, let's actually bring back the granite to 99. And then if we're not building anything here, let's build some copper. All right, that's almost there. 2.2 cycles. This is going to take another 10 cycles. All right, I hope this works. I hope this works. Everything's looking pretty good, though. So what do we learn? We learn that you have way more water than you need. And we might be better off melting the area taking the water and feeding that to the fish and then just melt the second ice biome because I haven't touched this at all some of the water we had access to is just sitting right here so we have a lot of water potentially just not using it Oh yeah, there's this area I need to start mining as well. So it's here. They could actually climb up to here if they want to, so we actually can't go through that. And then I'm climbing to here. So I can mine everything else. Nice. And then there's sandstone here we could grab. I should just utilize it to be honest. Let's mine this out and then start trimming this backwards. Reed fiber is 11 units. We actually have a lot of reed fiber, so we're good. Just waiting on the diamonds, building out the new rockets. Let's get another one in. Oh, we're waiting for the refined metal. That's fine. That's fine. All right. All right. Looking like the only thing we need to do is uh, get the morale up, which is actually not going to be that bad. So we might want to look into doing something for specifically just a morale. And I already have a good idea of what is going to be pretty good for that. I am going to make a nature reserve uh, shower area. And we're just going to use the same uh, bathroom loop here. And then that way we'll pick up another six morale with the uh, nature reserve bonus. And then everyone should be at 16 morale after that. If not, we'll just pass out some skills. We have one guy. Wait, wait, wait. It's literally one person. Napolini's. That doesn't have 16 morale. Napolini's, man. What's wrong, buddy? <laughs> Why are you the only dupe not at 16 morale or higher, man? You can talk to me, Napolini's. Let me know. Napolini's can talk to us. We could help. Is he a picky eater? I don't think he is. Napolini's, man. Yodeler, ugly crier. Oh, it's because he has bad decor. Germ resistant, small boosts. I mean, he's all right, though. So he has... Oh, he does... Are you eating in one of the rockets? 
Is that what's happening? You can't do that though. We don't have we don't have a meal hall there. Oh, I see. One. Eleven. I only have. I see now. I only have twelve tables. So not everyone is getting a place to eat. <laughs> uh, I see. Now we have 14 dupes and 12 tables. That makes a little bit of sense now. Okay, let's add a door here so we can deconstruct this door. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. Get an extra two tables out. Zombie sports. You didn't have zombie sports. Napolini's man. Did you have zombie sports? Is he taking a dump? Where's he at? Uh, where did Steve go? Where's Napolini's? That's Suki. There he is. Did he have zombie spores? Nah, he didn't have zombie spores. He's he's the one with low morale. I wish we could see the morale. He's at 14 over here. I think if we get the Great Hall shower design, though, it should be fine. Alright, so it's probably going to be something like this. And then let's have showers on the left and right. So... That should be the play. And then because of how it works, it's going to be these two. Is the park sign two tiles wide? No, it's one tile wide. Cool. So we do here. Cancel, cancel, cancel. Here, 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 here. And then we have a shower in the middle. Shower here. And then the natural plants. Oh, but my uh, grub fruit has to be dug up in order for me to actually plant these. That's fine. Yeah, we're using the door trick. Using the door trick. Gonna be using a exploit, Kappa. They don't think it'd be like it is, but it do. Does it allow me to do it with a double door setup? Because I know after I do one, I have to build the tile back. I guess we'll find out. I guess we'll find out. All the tiles are made out of sandstone. I actually can't do that. Here we go. Igneous. All right, all right. That should be fine. Get the morale up. Let's get the dupes inside the Great Hall. Only way to do it. And how's the rockets? In one cycle. Not bad. Making the copper. Got the steel coming out. All right, so now we just got to build out the tiles. Uh, I need the tile there, actually. Copper, like I asked for it. Nice. I could probably reduce this back down. Actually, not having more should be fine. Steam engine. Uh, trailblazer. And nose cone. Nice, nice. Alright, so this one is ready. Not enough steam. All right, so we got to reroute the pipes, which is why the pipes are designed like this. There's an overflow setup, and then we could just pliers it to bypass directly to here. So pretty good. That allows us to fill up this rocket. Also, do we have enough water in here? 78 kilograms. There is 20 tiles. So this is what? 150 times 10, so 1.5 tons. That's actually not bad. I have enough steam for at least 10 more steam rockets then, in that regard. That should be fine. I also gotta wait for these guys to build this. We gotta build the, uh, park sign. Just, wait, 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 wait. Igneous. Oh no, we just use Igneous. Right there. Alright, wait for the dupes to build this. Guys, I have to use the restroom. I have to be right back. Don't worry, it's gonna be like 2-3 minutes. Won't be that long. No one's going to die, right? 
Oh shit, someone might die, huh, when I'm when I'm away. Is anyone doing a dig command? It doesn't seem like that's the case. Alright, no one's gonna die. No one's gonna get stranded. Right? Knock on wood. <laughs> I'll be right back, you guys. Guys, we're back. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. We are back. We are back. We are back. Speed this up. No one's dead, right? Yep, 14 out of 14. Still building the rocket. Can't be mad about that. And let's fill this up. This is gonna be... Okay, 100 kilograms. Not too bad. Add in more water here. Cold water. Temperature of this. 30 degrees. That's actually not that bad. Comes out around 80, I imagine. No, it's around 50. Oh, it's copper that we're making. It's not that bad. I want to reroute the pipe a little bit higher, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. What we could do, though, that would speed this up, would be building a tile right here. And then we have the uh, hot water touch the salt tile which melts the liquid atop of that. That could help us out a little bit for melting the water to cool down the water here. We're down to 800 kilograms of oxygen. Okay, we are going through this. We're actually going through the water. Okay, maybe I should continue uh, producing more oxygen. I mean, we have enough. Ooh, this one's cutting down. Uh, I shouldn't be using more, though. Yeah, it's about four times the amount. And this is pretty active. Oh, because that goes into the suits. Interesting. Okay, so you know what I'll do? I go like this. And then I cut the pipe here. So this pump pumps into all the generators because we have the volume here. 400 kilograms versus this is going down below 100. Yes, chlorine is not the heaviest gas. CO2 is. And I believe I have proof of that right here. Just in case you didn't believe me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know you believe uh, the words. But we have visual evidence. I want to show it off. CO2 is indeed the heaviest gas. So I could drop down and then go down here and grab all the sand. Okay, cool. These sweetles, man. For reals. Chlorine is heavier than O2. Yes. Uh, I believe O2 only has a few things lighter than it. Hydrogen. And then polluted oxygen is around the same density. So sometimes it doesn't go up or down. It just stays around the same level. After that, natural gas is heavier. CO2 is heavier. Chlorine is heavier. Ethanol is also pretty heavy. But yeah, oxygen is pretty light, to be honest. Do you believe the words that are coming out of my mouth? Yeah, man. 
Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? That's the Rush Hour classic, dude. With Jackie Chan and uh, Chris Tucker. Only way to do it. How do you handle pinch rope? Speedy V. Uh, we're talking about the Poke Shells, right? This guy. We're talking about these guys, right? So these guys, they only attack you if there is an egg nearby. So how that works is they have to be close to the egg. And they also have to be able to navigate towards the egg. So sometimes if the egg is really far away, egg or baby. No, no, no. Babies don't. It's, it's only egg, right? I, I think babies don't really matter. I might be wrong. I think it's just egg. But um, either way. I I think the baby does not trigger them. It's only eggs, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Curbs. I was I was confused with the sergeant's statement. I was like, wait, that's not the case. It's only eggs. Uh, usually, what you would do is just keep them in a room. A normal room, maybe set up like this. And what the trick is, is just auto-sweep the eggs. If you auto-sweep the eggs, and you have them come out somewhere else, they will never get aggro to you. Now, of course, there's a better design to this. I have a YouTube video that shows you the easiest way to handle Poke Shells. And it's called the Crab Shack with anti-critter mechanics. Anti-cramping mechanics, I'm sorry. But yeah, I have a YouTube video that better shows off the design. Because there's a couple things that um, you could do. So, I would recommend checking that out. But basically, for the Poke Shells, normally you keep them wild. You could feed them if you want. But for the design, you basically keep them in a room, sweep out all the eggs, and then have the eggs fall inside when they hatch. And that design is on the YouTube for you to check out. Hope that helps. I love the name. I'll check it out. Yo, man, it's the Crab Shack, baby. Nobody gets hurt in the Crab Shack. It's for, uh, you know, keeping the crabs happy. Do I get the tile? Oh, I do. Sweet. All right, so let me do this one next and build a tile on top of this. Oh, and my steam engine. It's probably maxed out, huh? Yep. Okay, so we got to reverse the pipe. Uh, that means we go back into here. No, it's here. And then we cut this so it flows backwards. And then we have a bubble here that's very unfortunate. It's never going to leave. But at least we uh, could empty out the pipe so we don't take any more uh, damage from that. All right, so we got to build out that tile. We'll take some time for that, which is fine. Still got to do the deconstruct, building the tile, get some natural tiles, and then we have to uproot all the grub fruit and replant, uh, replant it, which is fine. We'll lose a little bit of sulfur as a result, but I don't think it's going to be that bad. Oh, I messed up. I didn't build the pipes out yet. No. Okay. Uh, cancel everything. Yes. Build the tile back on top. No. I forgot to do the pipes. So it's left side. So that's here. That's here. And then we have uh, this guy. So one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I would probably have to change my schedule around then so that we have five dues per schedule so that everyone actually uh, does it. First rocket there yet? Oh, yeah, it probably is. Oh, gilded asteroid field. So it works. It works. It works. I'm in, boys. Did we ever get a Frankie? No, we did not. We never got a Frankie, my dude. Feels bad. We didn't get the Frankie with the curly blonde hair. Blonde? Blonde. Yeah, Rowan's orange. No Frankie feels bad. Alright, so this is just going to chill there. 
It's stranded. <laughs> All right, so we know that's not it. We got one here, one here, one here to send to now. All right, so steel is at 5.6, so we can build another one if we want to. So we got to go for this. And then Napolini's. You know what time it is, buddy. We got to send you to the rocket again. Can you even reach? Where are you at, Napolini's? I need to check your pathing. Here he is. Ah, you can't reach. That's fine. Let's turn off crew so that we can build a ladder. Make that max priority. And then this is filled up. Nice. Okay, so this one is going to go to... We're going to that. Let's go to the bottom ones. So we'll go to the bottom right. And then we'll just launch that one. Alright, Trailblazer is in. It's rotating. This one is missing the... No, it still has it. Even though it's not rotating like this. I guess because it's not ready to launch. Alright, build this out. Launch the rocket. And let's start the journey. How much diamond are we behind? Eh, five more processes. We're almost there. Pipeline's taking some time, but it's fine. Fifty-seven degrees. Coming in at thirty-three. I need to melt more of the cold stuff, man. I wonder if I could just mine out the igneous and have it fall down in the water and cool down the water. Because this is minus sixty, minus fifty-eight. <laughs> Would that be cold enough to start chilling out the environment if I start mining this out? There's, this is a lot of water that we haven't tapped into as well. All the ice and polluted ice right here. So water is not a problem, to be honest. But since oxygen is going down, we're going to start boiling this again. I mean, uh, adding water here again. Need this tile, though. Oh, the ladder is built. Napolini's, it's time. That goes just right there. Begin launch sequence once you get there. Let's build this tile next. Melt out the ice. This is making steel. Dude, I have more than enough. This is such a good feeling. Hey, we're in, we're in. Razor Smash, welcome back. Howdy, howdy, family finish with the dinner and the snack. What? You have a snack after dinner? Isn't that considered dessert? Or is that something else? Alright, we're dropping back off Napolini's because it's a vacuum in there. He is back home. Let's go. And let's go to here. Nine tiles. Alright, that one's going to be ready. Napolini's is back. Deconstruct this. Let's build another steam engine. On top of this, we need the Trailblazer, classic, and the basic nose cone. Nice. All right. So just got to build these out. And then once we're ready, we could do the missions. Now nah, I made hummus while I was waiting for soup to finish. Oh, wow. This guy makes hummus. This guy's a baller, dude. Y'all see this guy in chat? How many people in chat makes their own hummus? Like, who has garbanzo beans just chilling in the pantry? You know what I'm saying, man? <laughs> that's, that's, that's impressive. Because you can't make hummus if the garbanzo beans are in water. Right? You have to have actual... It's chickpeas, fam. Is it chickpeas? Can't, can't you use garbanzo beans as well? Am I wrong? It is chickpeas. Oh, crap. I have I have two to eight cans of chickpeas in the pantry. Oh wow! Wait a second. I heard that if the chickpeas or the be or the garbanzo bean, whatever, if it is chickpeas, I'm sorry, I got it wrong. But uh, I heard that if it's in water, or if it's wet, oh, it's the same thing. Okay. Um, I heard that it doesn't make hummus if it's in water, right? Like you actually have to have dry beans. It's actually the same thing. Okay. Cool. 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 I didn't know that. Today I learned, boys. I thought it was something different. <laughs> wow. 
What a joke, Zero Dragon. What a joke. I've never had a Garbanzo bean on my face. I'm not going to say the other version, though. You know the difference between a chickpea and a Garbanzo bean? Isn't it the same thing? Beat me to it. Oh, Mordax coming in with the same jokes. I see you guys, man. Zero Dragon, though, just went in for the kill. Gar uh, Mordax tried to set himself up, though. <laughs> I see you guys over there, man. I see you guys. Yeah, I, like, so... I used to work for a company, and everyone called it Garbanzo Beans when we uh, would make hummus and sell it. Oh, zucchini versus uh, albagine. Oh, yeah, that's another one that's really weird. Like, depending on where you're from, like, it's it's a different name, right? It's kind of interesting, man. Oh, it's a different fruit. We call it something else. <laughs> it's like you go anywhere else in the world. It's, it's not called pineapple. It's called ananas. Right? You know what I'm saying? You know how we're the only country in the world that calls it pineapples? And everyone else in the world calls it ananas or something similar to that? It's, it's pretty wild, man. Solid garlic, chickpeas, lemon juice, olive oil, and then chickpea water blend. You use the chickpea water? Language, I'm sorry, it's language. In English, we call it pineapples. In every other language, it's called ananas or something similar to that. Oh, eggplant, zucchini, auberine. Wait, 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 zucchini and eggplant should not be the same thing, though. What, what in the world? Wait, hold up. Is it the same thing? Zucchini is corgate. Isn't corgate packaging? I'm so confused. Yeah, but it starts with an A. It's similar enough to the ananas that I think it's fine. We, we literally go pineapple. <laughs> it's like, what in the world is that? What's Corgit? I'm so confused, dude. What's Corgit? Isn't Corgit packaging? That's like the, uh... When, when you get the, uh... Uh... Like, cardboard sleeves. The dividers. Corrigate. Oh, yeah, yeah, Okay, so I'm thinking of something else. Hey, Heepo, what's good? I'm in a meeting, but want to drop alert. Hope you're having a great stream. Thank you for the lurk, man. Hope the uh, meeting is nothing too crazy. A lot of the times, man, you get one of two things. Someone says, this meeting is bullshit. Or, this meeting could have been an email. It's normally one or the other. <laughs> Hopefully, though, it's a uh, required meeting and nothing, uh, you know, frivolous like that. But hey, appreciate the lurk, Sequo. Thank you for the support. Or both, that's true. I had, I had, uh, I, when I had my office job back like five years ago, I had, I had a coworker that had socks that said, this meeting is bullshit. <laughs> and one time we were in a meeting and he just pulled, he was like, hey man, look at this. And he crossed his legs and then he pulled up his pants leg a little bit. I saw his socks and it was mad funny. <laughs> oh man, that was, that was a good time. That was a good time. I'm not going to say that, dude. I can't pronounce words that's Portuguese. Portuguese language is weird, man. It's like the pronunciation, it's so weird from what I'm used to. That I don't think I'd be able to just say anything similar enough. I had a Portuguese coworker, and I remember hearing her talk to her family. It was so weird. I was like, that's not even close to Spanish at all. Because I would imagine there's a little bit of similarity, but apparently it's 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 so different. Oh, okay. So half is talking about something else. Okay, I thought you guys were talking about corrugated packaging. That is like the cardboard stuff. So yeah, the chickpea water is full of protein and flavor. It helps smooth out the hummus. It's also known as aquafaba, which is vegan egg substitute. What? Wait, what? Water becomes eggs? I'm so confused. I'm just gonna nod and go, yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds about right. Alright, so this is 7.2. This is out of range, but it's fine. Alright, we got three more, four, and then we'll do these two. We'll do that one last. These two we're gonna ignore. 
I feel like every stream you end up learning so many things that blows your mind. Dude, I'm gonna be real, man. I haven't gotten the chance to travel, see the world. I would imagine there's even more things I just don't know about. That if I were to like meet more people, see more places of the world, that it would be even more mind blowing. But that's that's one of the things, right? As as a human, you don't know everything in the world. And if you think that you do know everything in the world, it's, you know, fish in a pond, right? So I got to expand the views. I got to see as much as I can. And for the most part, traveling is going to be the best for that. But not everyone has the chance to travel, right? Not everyone gets that opportunity to be able to uh, have the funds, go where they want, meet the people, maybe have friends in that area that are able to show them the uh, area and whatnot too. Uh, you got to always be learning. The, the moment you stop learning is the moment you die. Because life afterwards is just going to be repetitive. You're doing the same thing every day of the week. You don't really care about it because you don't care enough to learn. And so it's going to be a horrible time. Once you make that realization, you're going to want to always learn. This seems like a fairly good way too. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Um, especially when you stream a long time. So that everyone in the different time zones gets a chance to stop by. Get to meet a lot of different people. And also it helps that if you play a game that has a wide, you know, worldwide kind of an audience kind of like that. It's pretty cool. Get to meet a lot of people in chat, learn some things. Weird things can be egg substitutes like blood. What the heck? That's so weird. But yeah, but does that, if you're vegan, you can't eat that. Quite the smorgasbord of nationalities in chat. Yeah, there's a lot of people in chat from uh, all parts of the world. It's just, I feel like there's also some people that don't understand or are able to communicate in English as well. That probably hurts their ability to kind of like hang out and communicate with us. I feel bad for those guys. But uh, dude, man, yeah, we have a good variety of people. Yo, Lucas Moda, let me know if you have any questions about the uh, Super Classic run that we're doing right now. Yeah, man, we, we only speak English. <laughs> I only speak English. It's a struggle, dude. It's a struggle. All right, let's speed this up. We got to build our pieces right here still waiting for the dupes to get it done. We have 6.9 cycles before we get to there. And this has a round of 11. That's not bad. Unable to speak or understand English? Sounds like an American to me. Yo, man, I see you over there. I see you over there. It depends on the English, man. It depends on the English. I remember growing up, we had to learn old English in English class. And let me tell you what, man, that stuff was a nightmare. Old English needs to be banned, dude. Like, it makes no sense. <laughs> old English, man, and reading Shakespeare, I'm just like... Like, I hate this. <laughs> I, I struggled so hard in that in high school, man. You got pineapple pizza? I don't mind it as long as you don't order that at a proper pizzeria. Like, if you go to Rome and you order that, oh, man, you, you messed up, bud. You messed up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, man? If you do a fast food pizza, like a Domino's Pizza Hut, and you get pineapple, that's fine. That's whatever, man. But don't go to Rome, dude, or something like that and order pineapple on the pizza. You know, man, you know what I'm saying, man? That's fine to do. But but you can't be doing that, man, at a proper place. It's like, I don't think I've ever heard of anyone going to a really nice steakhouse and go, let me get this shit well done. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you go to a nice steakhouse, you never get a steak well done <laughs> you know what i'm saying man you know what i'm saying like like you're not supposed to do that man oh you can't order pineapples on pizza in rome it's called ananas oh zero dragon you got me there man you got me there he's right he's right would enough pork paired with the pineapple it could be decent but i wouldn't ever order it for myself so what Razor Smash is saying is that he would have one piece of pineapple per slice of pizza. And he would like to have it on the side. 
that sounds about right, man. It's kind of like how when people uh, eat tacos, they give you the pickled radish, and then you eat that between the tacos so that it cleans the palate, and then you could experience the flavor again. Pineapple is an interesting food. Yeah, it has acid. It's sweet. It's overly sweet. I wish they wouldn't order steak well done by the Wait, wait, they do? I thought that only happens at like a, like a, like if you go to Black Angus or you go to a diner, hey, let me get the steak well done with eggs or something like that. It literally eats you too. Yeah, I actually can't eat that much pineapple. The pineapple actually kind of destroys me. I hate to say that. The pineapple, like the acidity, it, it hurts the inside of my mouth after I eat too much. My tongue starts to hurt. After that, I also have acid reflux, and the pineapple tears me up at night. <laughs> it is not a good time, dude. It is not a good time. Steak well done is a sin. Yo, man, I agree. I used to work at two different par uh, prime steakhouses. Hundreds of steaks sent out, well done, with a side of ketchup or steak sauce. I really hope those were children. Because when I was young, I would do that. Because I didn't know any better. Oh, how would you like your steak? I want it well done. Because it sounds like it's, you know, done properly. <laughs> and I don't know what the word rare means. I'm five years old, dude. What's rare? I'd be a little kid. Yeah, I want ketchup on everything. <laughs> Not even just the steak. Let me get that on the vegetables as well, you know? No, it's not. It's it's actually adults doing that. Ah, oh, dude, feels bad. That's a bad feeling, man, when that happens. Nice. We got the tiles. Need to make sure we don't deconstruct the pipelines. So this is good. This, 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 this. Not that. Just a tile. All right, so no deconstructing of the pipes. Good, good. And then we got to get the wastewater going up. And then we should connect this. So we'll get this ready. As an adult, I want to catch up on everything. 3DV. Let's, let, this is the ultimate test of if you love ketchup. How do you feel about buying original flavor chips, potato chips, and then dipping that into ketchup? That is the ultimate test. <laughs> so how do you feel about that? How do you feel about that? How do you feel about getting a ri You say yes? Oh, man. Okay, so you really do love ketchup, man. I have found out in my time as a college student that anyone that eats potato chips with ketchup loves ketchup. Like, they love it. Like, it's, 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 it's no other way to describe it. Like, they, they just love it. And, I, you know, you can't fault them for that. <laughs> but, but the people that say they like ketchup but don't do that, they don't really love it as much as they do. And that I have found it was, was like a good test of whether or not, you know, they actually like that stuff. <laughs> it's a weird idea, though. It's a weird idea. But, yeah, there's people that do that. And, the, and I've, I've talked to people. You know what they say? If you ever gone to In-N-Out in, in uh, California, you could order your fries well done. And it's the consistency of actual potato chips. Because the fries are pretty thin already. You get it well done, it's just crispy. And it tastes just like potato chips. So it's kind of like eating well done fries from In-N-Out. That's how they described it to me. I was like, what? I guess I could kind of see it. And then I tried it and I was like, you know what? I could, I could kind of taste it too. As someone completely spoiled by a good steak, it's hard to get a steak above medium. And if the steak needs any seasoning or flavors, then salt and pepper, the steak isn't high enough quality. Yep, 100% agree. The best steak I've ever had was medium rare and uh, just salt and a little bit of herb butter. Whatever kind of herb mix they had at the time. I also put chips on burgers and sandwiches. That's actually different though. Chips on burgers and sandwiches are delicious. I, I'm, I, I'm down with that, man. <laughs> I'm down with that. That stuff is delicious. It's slept on. Getting potato chips on uh, inside the burger, inside the sandwich, or even just french fries. 
dude. Oh, amazing. It's amazing. I'm not even kidding, man. I love it because it's like, it's a good contrast. It's more filling. And also, I just love potato, dude. I would say potatoes probably make all of my favorite carbohydrate dishes. Anything that's carb based, that's using potatoes, top tier. Chips, hash browns, potatoes O'Brien, oven roasted potatoes, mashed potatoes. Uh, you know, there's there's just so many ways you can do potatoes, gnocchi. It's just delicious. I love potatoes, man. Potatoes are so good. Debatable topic. Peanut butter on burgers. If you put peanut butter, peanut butter on a burger, does that mean that it's a sandwich? Burgers are sandwiches though, right? But sandwiches aren't burgers. Scalloped potato. Oh, that's a pretty good one. There's the... Uh, what do you call that? The one where they do thin slices and then they grill it on every side. I forgot what that's called. It's like a French potato. Potato bread. That's true. Another one. There is a place near me that does PB&J burger. And I was like, what the F? And I had it was my favorite burger. <laughs> There's a place in uh, Cali called Shake Shack. Right? Shake Shack. And they have a secret menu. And on the secret menu, I heard there is a peanut butter burger. And it is, accordingly to the reviews, the best thing on the menu. And they say that it might sound weird, but once you have it, it's amazing. I've heard of that before. I've never had it, though. But yeah, there's a place that's a, a chain, kind of like In-N-Out down here, called Shake Shack. And they talk about that. Secret menu, peanut butter burger. People say it's amazing. No jelly on it, though. There's no jelly. So it's probably not the same thing Half Pint's talking about. But Speedy V, I gotta ask, man. Did you just wake up one day and go, hey, let me put some peanut butter on this uh, cheeseburger real quick? How did that happen, dude? How did you discover the taste? Oh, the J in this case is bacon jam. Bacon jam. Oh, that sounds delicious. <laughs> that sounds delicious, dude. Let me get a little bit of heart attack with this diabetes. Just a little bit, right? Just a little bit. It is. <laughs> it's called the Goober Burger, and it's like 100 years old. Really? Really? I wonder if it has any influence from Thai flavors because they use a lot of peanut butter in their satay and stuff. I went to a restaurant like Shake Shack and they had it. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Hi, I love the burger talk, so I'm not trying to interrupt, but I uh, don't want to forget to ask, what's up with the Wee's words? I just got the DLC and I have no idea what's going on with radiation. Uh, okay, so really quick about the radiation. I don't mind, uh, you know, going back to the burgers after explaining, but radiation is a new resource type. Kind of similar to how there's sunlight coming in from the sky. Radiation is another resource type. So we're able to actually harness radiation using something called rad bolt generators. Rad bolt generators come in the radiation tab after you research it. And they allow you to start taking the radiation in the ambient areas from various sources. There could be, you know, uranium right there that emanates radiation. Uh, the surface of the map from the sunlight, the ultraviolet rays also have radiation. You could also get it from other various things like shine bugs. They give you a little bit. Weeze warts are another one that gives you a good amount. And you potentially run into random artifacts or not artifacts. Uh, unique buildings is probably what I would like to call it. Right here, we have a crashed satellite. Crashed satellites actually have an insane amount of radiation. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. So these are going to be the radiation sources. There's other ones as well that I haven't gotten into, such as the nuclear reactor, also known as the research reactor that is right here, where it processes enriched uranium and creates a insane amount of radiation. Now, of course, that can be converted into something called rad bolts, right? Rad bolts are generated by the generators, and then we harvest that rad bolt energy into either research data or use the rad bolts for various buildings. The diamond press is one of them. There's actually a rocket engine that allows you to utilize the uh, 
Radbolt as well, called the Radbolt Rocket Engine, of course. It's in the name. So it's a new resource, and the way you harvest it is very different from everything else. But yeah, I would say to check it out. And if you're new to it, you will actually have to play around with it. As material science research, you could see it's very early in the tech tree. And for the most part, if you're playing on normal difficulty, it's very uh, safe to play around with. Once the values are, uh, you know, below a thousand, it's perfectly harmless when it's below a thousand, unless you sleep in that area. And uh, it starts getting deadly above that, but it doesn't really get that deadly unless, you know, you're parked next to it or your dupes idle next to it. To give you an idea, the reactor I was talking about, the nuclear reactor, creates 15,000. Wait, 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 one more time. It's deadly. It potentially can be. So how it works is your duplicates have a new status bar called radiation absorbed right here. This value is averaged out depending on how much contact they are with radiation. Now, for the most part, you're actually okay until this value goes over a certain amount. I'm not sure what that average is. It might be... It might be a hundred. I'm not sure. But what happens is, is that this is the thing you have to pay attention to. Now, the upside is every time they pee, they actually remove a little bit of the uh, radiation that they absorb. So it's actually not that bad. 100 for light poisoning. Yeah, okay. So for light radiation uh, sickness, it's 100. 250 is strong. 1,000 is a dead dupe. Thank you, thank you, Sergeant. So for the most part, your duplicates will remove any absorbed radiation when they pee every day. So there are a lot of like passive things that they could do. You could also make a rad pill as a radiation pill. And what it does is a... Uh, it prevents radiation from being absorbed. Oh, uh, what's it called? Pill. No. Radiation. Medicine. And then it's the apothecary. Basic rad pill. Here we go. So you can build a rad pill that absorbs the radiation. And uh, basically reduces the amount your body absorbs. So it makes it pretty safe. So although it's potentially kind of bad, it's actually not as deadly. No more Wheeze Wards in the bedroom? Ah, uh, no, you can't do that. As you can see, I have my Wheeze Wards in a corner. But yeah, for the most part, uh, radiation's pretty cool. And uh, for the most part, I think if you don't experience it for yourself, it's hard to really understand it. So I recommend if you don't want to sacrifice a colony, go into the game and then turn on sandbox tools and start playing around with it. Understand how the rad bolts work, how the radiation absorbs work, and yeah, I hope that helps. How do you handle radiation in a rocket? What I do is I do extra layers of protection. So normally inside of a rocket, you have radiation that shines in. I add an extra layer of plastic right here on the ceiling. And this reduces the radiation from 188 to 60. And then we have oxygen make it even less. So then oxygen reduces down to 59. So when I'm here, it's 55. So adding the layer of plastic, because plastic is one of the, if not the most easiest to obtain and best stats when it comes to radiation blocking. Only thing better than this is insulation and solid, uh, solid hydrogen. So solid hydrogen, we can never make. <laughs> so for the most part, plastic and lead are probably going to be what we're going to use the most. Uh, lead metal tiles, plastic window tiles, or plastic plastic tiles, I'm sorry. And then we would just reduce the amount that shines in. If it never goes above that critical amount, we never get sick, so it's actually pretty fine. Now, if you also are playing on a higher difficulty, not only will you need the plastic, but you will probably also need the basic rad pill. You would stack both of those to reduce the amount of radiation you absorb, and then you still pee them out, right? At the wall toilet. But yeah, that's only for the higher difficulties that that's required. Before that, you could get away with it, not getting to that high.
Thanks, I generally play in Sandbox mode anyway, so I'm trying to follow along with your YouTube series. Learning to do what you do, but not caught up yet. Oh, I got you, I got you. But yeah, that's radiation. And for the most part, we're just doing it for the research. It should be pretty straightforward. There's these targets right here that have a plus sign. That's where you want to aim for. And then click on the generators. You could rotate where you shoot. So you can see that we're aiming here. This shoots it down to here. And then this automation makes it so that we could angle the shot to the diamond press if we're not actually using it for research. So that's what we're doing right here. Everything converges into here. That launches. So that this one and this one going to different directions gets rerouted. And then we're just using it to fuel this building right here. All right. Guys, back to the burgers. It's all about the foods, right? Guys, have you guys heard of the burger known as the Juicy Lucy? Have you guys heard of that? It's a pretty famous burger, I believe, in the Midwest. All right, we have to go back to here. Let me cut this part and then do it like this. All right, so that's good. This has a trailblazer lander. We just have to fill this up now. It's not too bad. Pump out the steam, hot steam. No. Yeah, it's it's cheese inside the patty. So what they do is they take two ground beef patties. They smash it as thin as possible. And then they put a block of cheese in the middle and they wrap it around it. And then you have cheese in the middle of two raw beef patties. And then they put that on the grill. Flip that. And what happens is when you bite into it, the beef juices, right? Because it's on the inside, mixes with the cheese and the cheese melts. And you get like a very, I, I don't know how to describe it, man. It's a stuffed burger with cheese inside, basically. Yeah, it's a giant stuffed meatball. Yeah, but you eat it on a burger. That's a Juicy Lucy. I haven't had one of those before, man, but that's one of the things I want to try. It seems so good. It seems so good. I saw that on an episode of, uh, what's that guy called? With, with the uh, blonde goatee. Diner, Drive-In, and Dive. Sky Fieri. There we go. Yeah, it was, it was around the Midwest. It might have been Chicago. I forget where exactly. But the thing is, is that when I watched it on uh, the Guy Fieri Diner Drives and Dives, they were actually disputing. <laughs> they were all disputing where the original burger was made from. Because there were some people saying, no, it was made here. And then there was another restaurant like, dude, we've been alive for 80 years. We made it first. <laughs> there are so many people arguing about the roots of the Juicy Lucy. So I'm not actually sure where it's created from. Because there were just so many other locations staking their claim. Oh yeah, we did it first. Kind of a deal. So it's, it's like, I'm not really sure. But it might have been. But yeah, it was on somewhere in the Midwest. By the, the Mississippi River. More on the East Central side. I say the Midwest, but that's just what we call it, right? It's Minnesota. Yeah, there was, there was, there was so many restaurants arguing about the original Juicy Lucy. And then when they made it, it was a hit, dude. They do say that they warn every customer that, uh, oh yeah, uh, when you bite into it, it's going to be like a hot pocket. <laughs> so they just tell you like, watch out, man, it's going to be hot. I wonder how many people made the uh, first Philly cheesesteak. That's another one. What about a chopped cheese? How many people in New York made a chopped cheese and, you know, they were just... Someone else just took the recipe, claimed it as theirs. <laughs> There's so many things like that, man. What's a chopped cheese? Yo, man, you gotta look up a chopped cheese. My boy Vinny in New York, he got a shot. You gotta check him out, man. He's on the other side of the bridge by Brooklyn. He got a bodega, you know what I'm saying. Go over there. I get a Cuban, though. Not the chopped cheese. The Cuban got the special sauce. But the chopped cheese is basically you take the burger, put the cheese on top, and then you chop it up. So it's not a full burger patty. It's a little bit crushed up. Put that on a hero roll. And then if you want, you know, you put some more cheese on top. But it's pretty good. It's kind of like a cheese steak. Kind of. Kind of, kind of. But it's pretty good. I saw a TikTok where a dude put frozen fries and cheese on a waffle maker. What? Did it work? Then use the fried cheese waffle as buns for a bacon burger. Oh, dude. That sounds like I would immediately get like a bypass. Oh, my God. <laughs> dude, heart attack incoming, dude. 
cheeseburger with cheese waffle buns. My goodness. Gluten free. <laughs> dude, you said fries, dude. Are those not potatoes? What else could you stuff inside of a burger? Honestly, outside of cheese? Uh, I can't imagine anything else that really goes really well. It's hard, man. Bacon jam, onion jam, onions, cheese, jalapenos. Sky's the limit when it comes to stuffing inside. It has to mix with the other ingredients, too. Potatoes have gluten? I mean, it's a carb, dude. Here I am eating plain bagels with peanut butter. Dude, this guy got bagels. I'm over here drinking water. I'm snacking on uh, cough drop pills. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not doing that. It's a struggle over here, man. Wait, gluten from gl grains? I'm actually not sure then. I'm actually not sure then. I thought I thought potatoes had gluten. I, I guess I'm wrong. Maybe. Gluten is from wheat? Oh, it's only from wheat? So one time I was at the Asian market and I found something called deep fried gluten. 